Final speaker of the day, Mocro Services Architecture. It can provide a number of benefits like modularity and scalability, but implementing a microservice architecture is very difficult. So what to do? Well, our next speaker says that we can overcome these challenges using Dapper, a portable runtime. Let's meet Carlos Mendible, Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft. Carlos, great to see you. Great Thank to you see so you much too. for coming. And it's so nice to have somebody here in person in the studio as well. <laughs> so when you're ready, the floor is yours. All set? Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So I, I don't have a slice here. Oh, no, no, okay. So now I have it. Okay, <laughs> so uh, thank you for having me here. I'm gonna um, talk to you about how to overcome these challenges with uh, event-driven microservices uh, today. Um, uh, as you know, the world today is uh, really uh, distributed, uh, but we started and, and still today we have applications or solutions that are um, uh, created or deployed as, as monoliths. Uh, and when we have these kind of services or solutions, uh, we have um, solutions that are probably are easy to test, even easy to deploy. They can scale vertically, uh, but we have issues with that uh, or challenges. What happens when uh, you have this micro, sorry, this um, solution uh, for you know, let's say, um, many time, and uh, you want to, um, sorry. And, and you need to you know, fix some issues, uh, then uh, the slightest, the slightest uh, uh, fix that you deploy can you know, break all the solution. Uh, you may have um, issues trying to use new technologies, and, and, and that uh, starts to be cumbersome, right? Uh, so today we have these kind of distributed uh, solutions or applications. We break down these monoliths in different uh, solutions or um, or programs, right? And uh, with that kind of solutions, there are new challenges. So these new challenges are how do these new services that we decouple, uh, or how we decouple those new services, how does these services uh, speak with each other? How do they discover uh, each other? Um, how can we you know, observe uh, these solutions end to end so we are sure of what's happening and we discover uh, any kind of error or issues that it may have? So there's a bunch of challenges there uh, that we have to uh, address. And basically, today I'm going to talk to you about Dapper, which is a, uh, a runtime that's going to help you uh, with that, with those tasks. So it's not just about shielding your applications uh, from these challenges and help you overcome them. Uh, it's about also helping you developers uh, to not uh, have to spend that much time learning all these services and solutions that I'm showing you in the CNCF diagram that you're seeing and watching in the screen right now. Um, it's about uh, making your developers spend their time uh, on your business uh, um, logic and, and your solution and, and not learning all these uh, services and not uh, tying your applications or coupling your applications to the SDK, SDK sorry, of the uh, infrastructure that of your choice or your platform of choice, right? So Dapper um, helps you with all these challenges. Um, as you can see, you have uh, in the top row of the diagram I'm showing right now, or the slide, uh, you have some uh, languages, just as Go, uh, Node, .NET, uh, you have C++, you have uh, Java, right? And uh, Dapper is going to support all those languages through SDKs, but basically you can use any language that you want to use with, uh, to talk with Dapper. Uh, if, you, uh, if your language is capable of using HTTP APIs or gRPC APIs, uh, it's going to be perfect, right? And then Dapper is that middle blue ribbon that you have there in, in, in my diagram in the screen. And <clears throat> those are the components that Dapper is going to help you 
uh, to um, uh, use and 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 with those components you're going to be able to uh, abstract yourself or your applications or your solutions from the layer that's in the bottom that basically is the platform of choice where you're going to run your application you can use dapper on azure uh, aws uh, kubernetes on prem wherever you want right and it's not just about abstracting you from that platform it's abstracting you from the uh, underlying services that you're going to use so let's say if you want to use a database like um, mongodb uh, you can do that perfectly but if you need to choose uh, to switch your code and um, uh, not use Redis, perhaps, you can do that with cha changing any line on your code, just telling Dapper that you're using a different component to communicate with that kind of store, right? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Dapper and its building blocks, uh, but before, Oh, no, sorry, uh, I'm okay here. Um, these, these blocks are service invocation. It's gonna help you discover services. And let's say if you're uh, deploying this inside Kubernetes, it's gonna be pretty straightforward to find the services. It's gonna let you communicate uh, between services uh, in a secure way uh, via MTLS. Um, you're gonna have state management that's basically gonna help you uh, with all uh, state management. Let's say you have like mm, uh, a microservices uh, that is charge of, um, of, of a cart, a shopping cart, then you want to save that information in state. Well, uh, you're going to do that pretty, uh, pretty easy with uh, Dapper. And you have a uh, PubSub uh, component that's going to help you overcome um, uh, asynchronous messaging challenges. You're going to have, have bindings that's going to help you uh, react to external uh, services or resources events. And uh, you have observability. Of course, you're going to be able to track everything that's going on through your solution. You have the secret components that's going to help you, uh, you know, get your connection strings or, or whatever secret you need to uh, run your application. And finally, you have the, the actor model um, that's going to help you with um, uh, uh, con uh, con uh, solutions that have to deal with uh, concurrency. So before going in detail in each of those uh, components, let me tell you a, a little bit of how Dapper works. Uh, Dapper is always gonna work with a sidecar architecture. You're gonna have always uh, Dapper running um, in another process. Uh, so it's isolated from your solution. And what that means is that you're gonna be able, as stated before, to uh, use any runtime for your application, let's say .NET, let's say Java or whatever, uh, meanwhile, Dapper is going to be running uh, through a, a Go process because that's uh, the language it's programmed on, right? Then you can have uh, many hosted, hosted environments. You can use this in your local host, your PC, your Mac, your Raspberry Pi, if you may, IoT devices. You can do run this in a virtual machine. You can run this in, inside Kubernetes. And when you run this in, inside Kubernetes, um, be aware that uh, Dapper is going to install at least four components there. Uh, you're going to have the operator that's in charge of, you know, uh, tracking all these components and, and making sure that they are available to your application. You have you're going to have a Sentry, uh, that's the certificate authority that you have. Um, for your cluster and, and use it uh, with Dapper, you're going to have um, uh, a placement um, controller that's going to help you with the actor uh, model. And of course, you're going to have the sidecar injector that's basically going to be aware that when you're going to enable Dapper for a, for a pod, in the case of Kubernetes, then it's going to inject inside that pod the Dapper sidecar so you are able to use it. Let's deep, uh, dive deeper, uh, sorry, deeper inside each of these components. We have state management. Um, uh, the diagram I'm showing there, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you have a basket server, like your shopping cart. Uh, you have your, now that you know you're talking with a sidecar, uh, the way you save this information inside um, Redis, in this case, is talking through the app. So uh, you make a simple HTTP post call. Uh, you're using the state uh, API. And you are just saying, I want to save in this state store, which is what's that's the name, but it could be my DB or whatever. 
I want to save these JSON uh, inside that Redis. Uh, but you don't say anything about Redis. You, you, you just tell the name of the state store. Dapper is abstracting you and shielding your applications from uh, the fact that you're talking with Redis. So uh, there are many database uh, and other um, services that can help you with a state store. You can use MongoDB, you can use SQL Server, uh, and Redis in this case, Postgre, and you can go to the web page and, and check which are uh, all the other components that are available for you uh, in state management. Um, just to finish with this component, uh, this component is all going to help you with transient errors when trying to connect to those uh, storage. Uh, it's going to help you uh, manage uh, concurrency and um, <clears throat> uh, basically uh, it's going to help you uh, when you have you know, these kinds of solutions that not all your services are going to talk with the same database. So your developers are not spending time learning Redis or uh, Mongo or wh whichever solution you want to use as database. They are just talking HTTP with a Dapper sidecar or using the, the corresponding SDK for your language of choice, and you're going to be able to save all this information. Service invocation. So uh, that's other of the challenge I mentioned uh, when I started, right? Um, how do we call from service A to service B? Uh, it's not a direct connection. We're going to go always through the di dapper si sidecars. And uh, as you see there, all calls are local. So if I want to go from service A to service B, I'm just going to call my, my sidecar, localhost. Um, I'm going to call the invoke API, and I'm going to say I want to invoke which service. That's the name uh, which you use to register uh, this service inside uh, Dapper. And then what's the method you want to you want to call in this case is the catalog items and dapper uh, it's able to find the other sidecar in this case the service B sidecar and it's going to talk securely between them and it's going to do it with MTLS uh, uh, there and so it's secure of course and then the second sidecar is the one that's actually going to make the call to your service and, and inside uh, uh, inside your pod if, if you're running in Kubernetes or side by side if it's, if it's in another environment. So what about asynchronous messaging, right? Uh, you want to decouple your applications, your, your microservices, you want to decouple them. Uh, you want to use uh, perhaps RabbitMQ, you want to use Azure Service Bus, you want to use Kafka. Uh, but if, if you do that as, as we are used to, you're going to tie your application to that solution, right? Uh, if you don't want to tie that, uh, you can use Dapper, of course, and it's going to help you uh, with this. So basically, you're going to have your services that, that subscribe or your services that publish messages. You, talking directly to Dapper or receiving those messages from Dapper, right? And that's going to shield you from uh, all the issues that you may have um, uh, with PubSub. And it's going to um, at least deliver each message once, okay? So in the diagram, you can see that you can use either Rapid MQ or, As or, so yeah, or Azure Service Bus. Um, and that's just a choice of the component that you deployed with your application. And when I say you deploy a component, you're going to see that in my demo later. But it's basically uh, a YAML file where you're saying, I'm using this PubSub or Redis or whatever, okay? What about bindings? Bindings is a way to react to uh, external events or send events to external resources. So in the diagram I'm showing here, uh, you can see that Dapper is reading message for a tweet from a Twitter feed and basically sending those messages inside your service. So you can you know, uh, read those messages, save those messages. Uh, I'm going to show you in the demo that you're going to be able to analyze those messages with cognitive services. Cognitive services, sorry. And once you do that, perhaps you want to send an SMS or you want to send an email through uh, SendGrid, perhaps, then Dapper Bindings is going to help you with that. So you don't have to deal with how Twilio works or how Twitter works or um, HTTP triggers work or cron even. Uh, those are components that are there. You have Apple push notification supported. So Dapper is shielding your application and your developers from all that cumbersome, cumbersome stuff. Right? And you're able to react uh, in a serverless kind of way uh, to those events or send events to the outside world. And it's pretty neat. Of course, any of this wouldn't make sense if you couldn't be, uh, or if you couldn't uh, monitor or observe what's going on uh, with all your solutions. So uh, Dapper um, is going to 
um, expose the metrics and, and the logs and the telemetry necessary to, for you to be able to track everything that's going with your, going with your solution, as long as you're using Dapper, of course. And the way it does is, is this publish this information through open telemetry, also open standards, right? Um, and um, by default, it's going to send that to a uh, uh, Sipkin server if, uh, if, uh, service, if, if, if I may. Right? So once again, you can, use, uh, you can plug any logging solution uh, to, once you're using Dapper, because Dapper is exposing all this information through open standards. So again, uh, it's pretty easy and straightforward, and you're going to see that uh, in my demo in a couple of minutes. What about secrets? I want to handle connection strings. I want to handle certificates in my applications. I want to handle certificates, and I want to do that um, uh, all in a secure way. So the way this works is you can use Dapper to talk with, let's say, an Azure Key Vault uh, under, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, as the platform or infrastructure you're using, but you can use uh, uh, Secret Manager from uh, GCP or AWS, or you, even you could use ha HashiCorp Vault uh, without any issues. Uh, just making a simple, uh, as you can see, a simple get call to your Dapper, which is going to, you know, uh, abstract your application uh, from the way each of those uh, services work. So a simple call to uh, sec the secrets um, API that Dapper exposed for you. Uh, you give it the name of the secret store you're using. In this case, it's a secret store, but it could be my key vault, by instance. And then you give it the name of the secret or key you want to read. And basically, it's re going to return that payload as JSON. And again, you this is the, like the raw HTTP call, but you can do it with uh, the Dapper SDK of your language of choice. And to finish with the components, uh, we have the actor model component. And if you have to deal with uh, concurrency in your solutions and you're working, uh, sorry, and you need uh, to find a solution that can help you uh, work with discrete uh, units of compute, um, the actor model that comes with, with Dapper is going to be really helpful for that. And it's going to uh, shield you and your devs from uh, the difficulties that you may encounter trying to deploy or create these kinds of solution by yourself. So you could ex can explore that uh, if you're interested. I'm not going to deep diver. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm not going to dive deeper <laughs> inside uh, uh, this component. Okay. So um, now I'm going to go and show you uh, my demo, uh, and I hope you you enjoy it. Okay. So let me show you what this demo is about. We have a Twitter producer microservice that receives tweets via Dapper and basically save those tweets in, in database and state and then publish that to an asynchronous message solution. Uh, Redis in this case, I'll show you that later. Um, a Minecraft bot that uh, subscribes to those messages, receives those tweets and sends a uh, a post to a Twitter sentiment um, uh, service that basically calls uh, Azure Cognitive Services to analyze the sentiment of, of the text. Uh, and once the Minecraft bot receives uh, those scores, the Minecraft bot uh, posts that to uh, you know a Minecraft server that we have here, and it's not shown on on the diagram. Okay, so. Let me show you how that looks inside Kubernetes first. I'm going to show you uh, this in K9S. Uh, so we have here um, uh, the you know the Dapper system namespace. That's what I'm showing you. So you can see that we have the operator here, the placement, the sentry, and the sidecar injector. Those services that uh, I talked to you about before. Uh, that's that's what Dapper uh, you know deploys inside your cluster in this case. Uh, let, let me show you the default namespace where I deploy my solution. So uh, you can see here the Twitter producer uh, service. I'm going to show you the logs. And as you can see uh, right now, we are receiving some tweets uh, live. Uh, and again, uh, let's see where's the um, the hashtag. You can see it here. It's La Palma, so we're receiving it, and then down here, we're receiving that information live, okay, and logging it to the console. Uh, then we have, uh, of course, the Twitter sentiment. It's, it's just logging uh, the scores, so nothing uh, 
more to show here. And we have the bot I was talking to you about. And as you can see, it, you know, it writes down the message and it, it's also writing down the score. Um, so basically this is, this is working. Okay. And last, uh, but not least, let me show you uh, the Minecraft server. So you can look at it here and uh, you can see that the bot, which is named after my daughter, Vicky, it's basically uh, sending to, um, to this Minecraft server, the tweet uh, with the score, right? So, so that's basically everything uh, uh, from, from inside the cluster that I can show you. So let's see what this looks like in, in code and, and YAML, right? Um, so this is um, what the famous components I've been talking to you about uh, look like, okay? Um, this is um, the, the Twitter uh, binding component that I'm using. Uh, we have a bunch of information related to how we connect to Twitter. That's what Dapper is using to connect to Twitter. And look at this down here. Uh, well, first, we're querying La Palma, as I told you. And look at this. We're using a secret store named Secret. So all this information that we have up here, right? All this information, that information is coming from a secret store. So let me, let me visit that secret store uh, just a second. Um, we have it here. And again, this is a Dapper component. It's named, the name is Secrets. And we're using in this uh, demo uh, an Azure keyboard. But uh, as stated before, you can change this with a, a local JSON file, environment files. You can use Secret Manager for any other uh, cloud provider or even something that you have on-prem. And this is the information related to how we connect to that keyboard in, in this case. So going back to the Twitter uh, component, um, and you can see here the secret refs, right? So this is extracting the information from the key vault or any other uh, secret store that you're using in this, uh, in your case, and uh, injecting that on on the company itself on at runtime. So the last thing I, I want to show you here is look at the tweets uh, uh, name for the component. That's the name I added to it, and I'm going to show you in the, on the right side uh, the code. Um, this is a um, ASP.NET Core application. So uh, I'm using the SDK that, that's created for the .NET and, and Dapper. Uh, I'm injecting a Dapper client here. And this section down here, it's uh, where we're saying, uh, subscribe to um, uh, any bindings that are needed. And look at this. Uh, the route that I'm exposing in this application is named Twits. And it's no coincidence uh, that um, this is the exact name I'm using in the component, right? So <clears throat> it's mapping um, all the Twits it receives. It's posting, Dapper is posting that information to the Twits route on the right side. So once uh, we receive those Twits, uh, and we, we receive the text of those Twits here, uh, what we do is, we save that information in state, and it's it's really simple. Look at the we're we're using a state DB, we're using ID and and the body of the tweet. That's all we need to save state in the, in our microservices. And down here, after we do some crunching, uh, I'm just publishing that event to an asynchronous messaging solution um, named Message Bus in a topic called Tweets. Uh, you know, with a with a crunch message here. So that's that's it that's that's easy we don't have uh, let me show you up here we don't have any um uh, sdk uh dependency on redis or on our on a specific database or even on rabbit mq or whatever uh we're just using uh, dapper right um so so um let me show you how, what uh the state db and the message bus looks like in terms of Dapper components. I'm gonna switch to the left side here. This is the state component. Uh, it's named stateDB, and that's what's why we're using this name on the right side here. Uh, we're using Redis. Again, this is all the information related to how we connect to that Reddit instance, and we're using the secret store to retrieve those passwords, okay? And again, this is the you know Redis uh, you know state component, but we could be using any database 
uh, that uh, that we will like, and as long as it's supported by Drapper right now. And uh, the message bus uh, component, um, you can see it here. It's named message bus, and we're referencing that on on our um, service on the right side. Again, this is all uh, we're using to connect to the to the component, the secret reference, and, and we're using Redis, but we, we could be using Event Hubs, uh, RabbitMQ, or whatever, uh, and we wouldn't have to change a line on our, our program on the right side, right? Uh, and that's that's pretty interesting. Um, for convenience, I use Redis on on my Docker and on on my PC to to test this uh, this solution. And for convenience, I also deployed the same Redis uh, component on, inside the uh, AKS cluster, the Kubernetes cluster I'm using. Uh, but of course, you could change that uh, uh, to whatever your real needs uh, on production are. Okay, so you can work with some components on uh, on your developer machines or even on prem. And then when moving this to uh, to the cloud, you can change the components uh, depending of uh, what the real needs are. Okay, uh, without having to change uh, the code of your services. So, uh, how do we put you know like your microservice uh, with the components together? Well, basically, you deploy the components in, inside the Kubernetes cluster, right? And then when you deploy uh, your application, you have to tell Dapper to inject the sidecars by enabling Dapper through an annotation here and giving, in, giving that service a name, uh, just in, for service discovery, uh, telling Dapper what port uh, your application is listening on so it's capable of posting the, in this, this case, the tweets to, to your uh, tweets route, right? Um, and telling about the tracing configuration that basically enables uh, what you what I saw you uh, first uh, the tracing and and in this case uh, all the metrics that we could see in we can see in in Sipkin. Okay, that's that's like the Twitter producer um, um, service. Then we have the Node uh, microservice here, uh, which is basically the bot. And look at this uh, up here, right? Uh, we're creating a route, this Dapper subscribe. This is where we're telling uh, Dapper that we want to subscribe to a uh, PubSub name message bus, that we want to hear anything that's received on the topics uh, uh, name tweet, and to please redirect all that information to a local route that's called tweets. So uh, we're going, you know, uh, without SDKs in, in, in this microservices, um, microservice, sorry. And down here, you can see this is the, the tweets route. Uh, we receive the, the raw data and we're using actions to post uh, that to a sentiment, um, uh, to the sentiment microservice. And this, uh, you can see up here that the URL we're using is, we're calling local host on the Dapper port, so we're calling our sidecar uh, and invoking uh, the Twitter sentiment uh, service uh, to the, and the sentiment method, right? So once we receive uh, the score, we get it here, down here. Uh, the last thing the bot does is, you know, chat or post that information uh, to the Minecraft server. That's that's it with this um, with this service. And let me show you the sentiment. Uh, um, <clears throat> service, sorry. So uh, again, this is an ASP.NET Core application. We're using uh, Dapper here. And uh, this line here is really interesting because uh, I'm using the SDK here. And what this line does is it's telling um, Dapper to inject uh, all the secrets that it finds on the secret store named secrets inside my configuration in, in this uh, solution so what it, this is doing is loading all those secrets that i had in the key vault i mentioned before uh as configuration inside this this application uh you can see um we're exposing a sentiment route and down here we're reading that configuration the, the cognitive services key this is what is uh, we're going to use to call the azure cognitive service and do uh, the sentiment analysis down here, 
And once we receive the score, we basically uh, write it to the logs that uh, was I show you and return that uh, down here uh, to uh, the bot uh, microservice. OK, so uh, basically uh, you just saw the defining some uh, components on, on the left side. Right. And deploying that to your cluster and then using um, the Dapper SDK, uh, which lets you let me go to the producer again, which lets you save state or uh, publish down here uh, very easily uh, the information. Uh, you can you can do it with the SDK. Right. And you have a direct dependency on your code with Dapper or you can use uh, uh, you know, a manual approach like I did on, on the node application where we're basically, uh, doing raw calls, uh, or subscribing to events, uh, just telling, uh, Dapper via some explicit route that we want to, you know, uh, subscribe to a message bus with this topic and, and where to send that information, right? It's, it's really, really, really that simple. So going back to, um, to the diagram here, uh, let us refresh a little bit. Uh, let me start again here. Uh, so we can run the query. Uh, since all the calls that you saw uh, that we're making are, are being done through Dapper, we could see all the, you know, all the telemetry related to that, to those calls, right? And of course the dependency tree that we were uh, looking at uh, when we started. And here you see again the, the Twitter producer, um, the Minecraft bot receiving that information and a Twitter sentiment doing something. And you can see here uh, clearly that I have some issues there that I should repair in the future. Uh, but uh, I think he, you got uh, the sense of what we, we can do with uh, Twitter with little code. Uh, almost no dependencies on, on, you know, the features that we're using in this case on, uh, in the cloud. Uh, you didn't see any line referencing the key vault, for instance, uh, directly in our code, but uh, through Dapper, we're abstracted from that. So uh, that's basically what I wanted to show you today. I had one, but it's not, it's not showing up here. I don't know why. <laughs> so, uh, well, that, that's basically it. Uh, uh, I hope you had a glimpse of what Dapper can do for you. Um, if you want to learn more, you can go to uh, the web page, it's dapper.io, and you will learn a bunch of that. Uh, we have a Discord server. Uh, you can join anytime, uh, talk to me or any other of the contributors of the project. And there's also a, a free ebook you can find online too. It's called uh, uh, named Dapper for .NET Developers. I know many of you uh, are not .NET developers, but uh, it's a pretty straightforward book to read. It's really simple, and uh, it's going to help you understand how Dapper or how can you adapt, uh, adopt Dapper in, in, in your solutions. So um, that's it. Oh, now my slide is on <laughs> here. <laughs> so <laughs> feel free to scan that QR code <laughs> for more information. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. That's great, Carlos, thank you so much. What a great way to end our talks here <laughs> in track two. So we do have a little bit of time for a few questions. So if you're ready, I'll fire oh, away. It's okay, fire. Uh, Emilio asks, um, if we need to connect real time, is the bus shared? And I think he's concerned about performance issues. Okay, so, well, uh, first let me address the performance part. Uh, Dapper is, is reading, co uh, sorry, written in Golang. Uh, it's really performant. Uh, usually the impact on your applications is going to be under the millisecond, right? Uh, if you're worried about how um, uh, live this information is going to enter your application, it depends on the service you're going to consume and, and, and the bindings you're going to use. Uh, what I show you in the demo basically is uh, uh, get, getting all the information live from Twitter. It was kind of slow because I didn't use like a popular hashtag, but I'm sure if you, if you uh, put like COVID-19 in that sample, it's gonna you know burst uh, all that information inside your your solution, and it's, you're gonna have to you know uh, process it as fast as you can. I don't know. I, I hope you I answer your question. I hope right. so too. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a final question uh, for you, Carlos. How how does Dapper compare with service mesh solutions? Okay. Uh, 
that's that's a question that that appears uh, when when we talk about Dapper because uh, we talk about observability and we talk about securing. Uh, calls between services. So uh, yes, we have that M MTLS there. Uh, so it's a gray zone, right? Uh, but there's a difference. Uh, Dapper abstracts you from uh, things that you have to be aware in your application and the services you have to use. Service mesh uh, are, are worried or address an issue with networking. So um, let me try to explain it this way. You probably are not going to see Dapper uh, ever dealing with AB uh, traffic splitting. Uh, that's something service messages uh, do for you. Uh, and you're not going to probably see any service mess abstracting you from a database or a Azure Key Vault or you know, a secret management um, solution. So I hope to answer uh, your question with that one too. Carlos, that's great. We are now running against the clock. So uh, all that remains for me is to thank you once more. Thanks very much for this amazing talk, for your time, <laughs> and for the demo. Thank Thanks. you very much, Thanks. Carlos. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.